The Menendez brothers, who were accused of, well, that we know that they killed their parents, um, but their defense was that they had been abused by the father repeatedly over the years, that the mother had allowed it. And Leslie Abramson so famously got up and, you know, t- t- did the direct exam of, of Eric Menendez, the younger brother. He cried on the stand. They had him in like the sweater vest. Uh, the jury didn't buy it and wound up convicting both of these guys. I've spoken to, I spoke to Lyle Menendez in a courthouse or a jailhouse interview when I was at NBC. It was fascinating stuff. But now there's new evidence in the case. You're representing them. And it's actually not just Mark Garagos, defense attorney, saying, reopen the trial. I have another trial, which defense attorneys do all the time, with all due respect. The judge himself has, is looking at the prosecution saying, you need to explain yourselves as to the job you did and why some of this stuff was not brought out in connection with this trial. So explain, what are, what are the two best things that have you arguing for a new trial here? First, the, the the best thing about being on your show today is being able to talk to Marsha in the green room because she has the institutional knowledge of what was happening in the DA's office at the yeah. time. Because the basically what we have argued is trial trials, number one, because there were two juries the first time around, both of those juries hung on whether it was murder or manslaughter. That was based on imperfect self-defense. Fast forward to trial number technically three, but the second wave or jury number three. What happened in the interim? Marsha remembers there was the O.J. Simpson case in between. The same trial judge in both cases, not in the O.J. Simpson, but in the Menendez cases, same trial judge basically invited the late, great David Kahn to rethink imperfect self-defense. David, to his credit, did not take the bait, at least just initially. Can you just explain what that they is, went, Mark? Hmm? Explain what imperfect self-defense is. Imperfect self-defense is basically where the law says what you did may not have been objectively reasonable, but we basically understand why you do it, and we're going to let that be mitigation. We're going to have it negate the malice element, which is required for murder. So, so you make, so talking- you you didn't murder your father in the midst of him allegedly molesting you, but you did it understanding that you were afraid of him and the next punishment could be coming your way, that kind of thing. Correct. And it, okay. all you're doing is negating the the element of malice. You're not saying I'm, I'm not guilty. You're saying if I am, I'm admitting guilt, but guilt of manslaughter. So okay. what happens? They do the trial. The judge starts excluding evidence that they did not or that he did not exclude in the first trial. And then after they rest, he allows them to withdraw or he withdraws the imperfect self-defense. By that time, the, the prosecutor had gotten the message. And then David, who was the prosecutor, argues in closing that it was an abuse excuse. These were entitled kids. There was no evidence of the abuse, which is astonishing because when you argue that and you know you got the evidence excluded, it's really the height of chutzpah. Now, mm. fast forward to now, we then get the Peacock documentary. We get the declaration of the other young man who was then Wait, a young stop. Boy. Let me stop you there know. because the audience doesn't know about this yet. So a, a member of the boy band Menudo uh, comes out in this documentary about his band, I guess, um, and says he too was molested by Eric and Lyle's father, Jose Menendez, who the boys were saying during the trial was a molester. Who was the president of the record company for Menudo. Okay, wait, and let me just add one other thing. We have a soundbite of this. The the accuser's name is Roy Rossello, again, of Menudo. And this is just a quick soundbite of him in the piece. That's the man here that raped me, this guy. That's the pedophile. How how old were you there? 14 years old. He's pointing to Jose Menendez, this RCA executive, and he said that... um, the band's founder brought him to the Menendez home in New Jersey to broker a deal between the band and RCA. That's when Jose Menendez allegedly drugged him and raped the then teenager twice 
Um, I won't get into the details, but he was only 13 or 14 when he says it twice, I guess a total of three times, he molested and raped him. Go ahead, Mark. Okay, now, you now have also, in addition to that, you have Kitty's sister, Marta, who has whose son has passed away, Kano. He, she's going through his things a number of years ago. In those things, she finds a letter that predates the murder by, I want to, or the killing. A year, right? A murder. Yeah, and uh, by about eight months. And in the letter, he's describing to his cousin, Marta's son, the fact that this is going on and- Eric and Menendez how- is telling his cousin he's being molested by his father months in advance of the killings. Right, and she finds it. She then gives it, I believe to ABC. I mean, we're still working through the provenance, but that letter combined with the declaration now that he was also doing the same thing to a third party has now caused the judge in the in the um, reaction to, if you will, or um, the aftermath of the writ of habeas corpus to issue an order asking the prosecution to respond. Interestingly, I was also telling this to Marcia in the green room, there in talking with the Kitty's sisters, there was a rule that was known in the family that if Jose, the father, was in the room with Eric, that nobody was allowed to go down the hallway, which to oh me is God. one of the creepiest things I've ever heard. But oh. that was known. And so- See, All right, so wait, so let me jump in. So the, the alleged letter, Eric's letter, writes as follows. This is, again, his mother's sister had a son who would have been Eric's cousin to whom Eric wrote this letter eight months before the killings. And Eric writes, I've been trying to avoid dad. It's still happening, Andy, but it's worse for me now. I can't explain it. He's so overweight that I can't stand to see him. I never know when it's going to happen. It's driving me crazy. Every night I stay up thinking he might come in. I need to put it out of my mind. I know what you said before, but I'm afraid. You just don't know dad like I do. He's crazy. He's warned me a hundred times about telling anyone, especially Lyle. Am I a serious wimpus? He continues. I don't know. I'll make it through this. I can't handle it, Andy. I need to stop thinking about it. Um, so, and then the, the cousin's name was Andy Kano. So Marsha, now the judge, he's, they've gotten the judge's attention. <laughs> the judge, Superior Court Judge William Ryan, demanding answers from LA County District Attorney George Gascon about the explosive evidence that was kept from a jury. Uh, quoting here from Los Angeles Magazine, judge issued an order on June 24th requesting Gascon, whose office prosecuted the Menendez brothers in two different trials to explain whether his lawyers exercised due diligence in pursuing evidence that the father, Jose, was in fact abusive. The judge points to this letter I just read from um, and wants Gascon to explain how diligently his office dug into claims of abuse or Jose Menendez's behavior at the time. This is so interesting. So what is that extraordinary for the judge to do that? And what do you make of the DA's conduct in all of this? So I knew the prosecutors for both trials. Um, and I was aware of the prosecution, the case, uh, the trials going on at the time. I have to say, um, I want to make it very clear that what the defense is saying and what the judge is saying is not that the prosecution knew about this evidence and hid it from them, which is important. It's that, well, did you try hard enough to find it? Based on what I've seen, they tried very hard to find it. They spoke to everyone. I know that in the first trial, they interviewed all kinds of members of family. Um, in fact, the, there was a whole motion based on teachers, friends, family, and coaches that had something to say about Kitty and uh, Jose Menendez and the family dynamics. And then, as I understood it, David Kahn, who retried the case, um, did the same thing, went out and talked to all of them and then prepared a motion saying, there is no, uh, there is no valid basis for this. These are not credible accusations and explained why. I did not see these motions. So I want to make it clear. I'm basing this on what I heard and discussed with them at the time. So it's not that they weren't trying to find this information. They certainly did. I know that. Why they didn't is going to be the subject of the discussion now and why the judge has issued what you asked for, an informal reply from the prosecution as to why they didn't uncover it. I'd like to know that too, because given what I know about the efforts that the DAs made in both trials, I'm very surprised this letter didn't come out 
What took so long? Where was it? And why does it only come out now? Junk science. That's what the doctor called many of those fruit and vegetable supplements on the market. Junk science because they use extracts of common produce department fruits and vegetables with few health benefits. But I want to tell you about Field of Greens. Field of Greens is different. They use whole organic fruits and vegetables, not a watered down supplement. And it's backed by a better health promise, which I'm going to tell you about. Each ingredient in Field of Greens was scientifically chosen to support vital organs like heart, lungs, kidney health. Others support your immune system, blood pressure, metabolism, and healthy weight loss. Their better better health promise is simple. The next time you're at a doctor for a checkup, if the doctor does not say, you're looking healthier than before, you will get your money back. How about that? That's a deal right there. So let me get you started with 15% off. Visit fieldofgreens.com and use my promo code MK. That's promo code MK at fieldofgreens.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.